Hi, I'm Joanna Helms, President of the Wayne County Development Alliance, and this is a presentation we call Truths and Myths in Economic Development. Statement number one has to do with product, buildings, and sites. Any open field can be considered an industrial site. Truth or myth? Mm, that's a myth. That's a myth. That's a myth. Correct. Very good. We cannot and we will not show an industrial prospect a site unless it is shovel ready and we have control of the site either through ownership or with an option to purchase. Why? Because our clients demand this and the competition for projects is just too tight. They do not have time to wait for a site to be prepared or to find out if that site's for sale. True industrial sites have all tests, development costs, uh, plans, certifications well known in advance of the client visit. Let me give you a quick example. The Brit site in Mount Olive. We had an option on that property. We were going to development, develop it. However, the development cost became too extravagant and we decided to walk away from that property. Therefore, it is not an industrial site anymore. Okay, statement number two, truth, truth or myth. The County of Wayne and the City of Goldsboro or the Development Alliance are the main resources for a grant or an incentive. Truth or myth? Myth. Truth. Okay, that is a myth. The county, nor the, the county, nor the city, nor the Development Alliance typically are the generators of a grant. It's really set by the state of North Carolina and the legislature. They, uh, the local unit of government comes into play when and if there is a match required by the grant structure. We don't have grants, we are not a loan authority, and we don't have a pot of money to dole out to projects even if it's a, if it's a very deserving business. And uh, let me give you an example of that. We do get calls from time to time from companies that are referred to us by either uh, elected officials or other business people that say, well, call the Development Alliance. They have grants and loans. We don't have grants and loans. We provide matches to state grants and loans. Okay, another truth or myth about incentives. Most incentives are paid well after a company begins or expands their operations. Truth or myth? That's a myth. Yeah. Yeah. Truth. It is a truth. Performance agreements are required between the state and the company or between the local unit of government and the company that spells out what both sides will do. If the company does not perform as agreed, the funds are either not dispersed or they are paid back to the company. There is no upfront money. Let me give you a couple of examples there. Here locally, Cooper Standard Automotive this past year announced an expansion. They applied for, they qualified for, and were given, granted, a 1NC fund from the state of North Carolina. The county of Wayne was required to match that dollar per dollar, which we will do. However, no monies will be dispersed to Cooper Standard until they have met their investment requirements and their job creation goals as spelled out in the agreement. Now let me give you another example. The Dell project that located in Winston-Salem several years ago is a very large project. They received quite a bit of state and local incentives. As we know now, that did not work out and that company has closed its doors in Winston-Salem. Therefore, proportional to the amount of grants that they received before closing, they had to pay that back to the state of North Carolina and to Forsyth County and the city of Winston-Salem. So all those provisions are in place in a grant. Okay, you all are doing pretty good so far. Next statement, truth or myth. Any company that has decided to locate or expand in a North Carolina community can be eligible for state grants or state incentives. Truth or myth? Truth. truth. Myth. Truth. Myth. Again, that company has already decided to locate. If they have already decided, there is no need to incent. Eligibility for grants and incentives is in part based upon the project being in competition with another state. Why would the state of North Carolina give you a grant simply to locate somewhere else in North Carolina? If a company is in Edgecombe County and they want to move to Wayne County, they do not qualify for a state grant. We call that rearranging vacancies. And uh, let me give you an example there. There was a hardware store uh, in Duplin County that was uh, wanting to relocate and they had chosen a site in Goldsboro. And they came to us, the Development Alliance, and they asked us about any assistance they might receive, either a grant or a loan uh, through us or the state. Well, 
they don't qualify. They have already made a decision to relocate from Duplin County to Wayne County. There is no need to incent them. There is no need to give them a grant if they've already made a decision to locate. Okay. Just a couple others that we will um, go over now that we often get uh, inquiries about. And this has to do with quality of life. So here is the statement, truth or myth. Quality of life is a top consideration when a company chooses a location. Truth or myth? Myth. Right. Okay, it is a myth. Quality of life is rarely ever a top consideration or at the top of a list um, for that company. Top considerations are labor and workforce, incentives, transportation, the cost of doing business such as taxes, and an available building or site and utilities. This is a business decision. It is not a feel-good decision. One or two top-level management might you know, come to this area and move to this location, but everyone else is hired locally. In Wayne County, we have never lost a prospect to quality of life. It is an important factor in your community, but it's not what executives around the industrial world are thinking about when they're making a business decision. Now, we're not talking about retail, not talking about small business or mom and pop operations or health care or the hospital. They do weigh quality of life at a whole different level than industry does. So, just want to keep that in mind when you think about quality of life. It's an important factor in your community. However, it's usually not a top consideration for an industrial facility location or expansion. Okay, last chance. Last statement, truth or myth? Our focus at the Development Alliance is industry, is industry. The size of the company does not matter. Truth or myth? Truth. True. Very good, it is truth. We have industries as small as a two-person operation, such as a machine shop, or ones that employ over 500 people. It's what they do that distinguishes them as a prospect or an existing industry. It's manufacturing, wholesale, distribution, machine shops, and back office type operations like the AT&T Technical Support Center. We do not actively recruit at the Development Alliance retail, restaurants, hotels, entertainment, et cetera. That's commercial development. And in part, it's because we can't really assist them. We're not geared to assist them. Our available buildings and sites are industrial buildings and sites. They're not geared towards commercial or retail. We don't write business or marketing plans. The community college does a good job of doing that. We don't have a pool of money to give away, even to the most deserving of business. And there are really no state grants for commercial development, so there's no local matches there either. Let me give you an example there. We do get a lot of calls for help from businesses. It might be water or sewer needs. Um, it might be creating jobs for at-risk youth, et cetera. And while those are all deserving things, um, those are not really our focus. Our focus is on industry, manufacturing, distribution, and wholesale. So in summary, let me just remind you that it's very good to be mindful of the basics of what the Development Alliance does. We do have a narrow focus, and that's okay. We cannot be all things to all people, nor do we try. Are there gaps? Yes, and we do try to assist when we can. We do give out demographic information and community information, and we do try to help and give referrals to the proper agencies, be they local or regional, uh, to help those people that do call us. Um, we do refer to commercial developers or to real estate brokers or to the Small Business Center at Wayne Community College or to the News River Development Authority, which is a loan authority, or even the Small Business Technology and Development Center. These are all places that we can refer some of the phone calls that we get. We do try to explain our focus to some of those calls or walk-ins that we simply are not geared to assist so that their expectations of us will be more properly directed and understood. It's an ongoing challenge, and while we are not bothered by it, we do recognize it. And we do appreciate everyone's help in helping us to clarify our role in the community. The Wayne County Development Alliance recruits industry. We retain industry by helping them grow and prosper and we develop industrial sites and industrial buildings for those new or existing industrial clients. Thank you very much.